Um, uh, so I, I think it, it is informative and helpful to sort of walk through what what does it take to raise angel funding, you know, and, and a lot of this replies to anything, you know, angel or venture scale, but, um, but since we're sort of at the early stage in angel scale, that's probably a, a good format for us. So um, why don't we start with point one, um, without necessarily you know, telling somebody they have a, a bad idea or something that won't work, um, a important filter is, is the idea or, or is the business venture scale? Um, because so many people are working on great businesses, but they're really, you know, they're, they're service businesses or they're small businesses. And, you know, you, you really, it, it just doesn't, the economics don't make sense to raise angel funding or venture funding for a business that isn't doesn't have the potential to be a hundred million dollar business so, so the tldr on that is figure out if your business warrants venture style capital right right figure out and, and figure out if that's the right type of financing for you because there might be other types of financing that is the right way to capitalize your business of course the best finance is always revenue. So, you know, often people are sort of waiting for permission to start their business. Uh, whereas if they just went out and found a customer that started paying them, they'd be, they'd be off and running. So sort of point one is, you know, do you have a venture scale business? Can this be a hundred million dollar business? And is that what you want, right? As an right. entrepreneur, is that what you want? All right. Step two, um, we'll sort of, I'll sort of focus this around things that, that we look for, um, one of the things that in particular, we look at a lot of deals outside Silicon Valley. So we have sort of a, a outside Silicon Valley, uh, you know, the rest of the country mindset. And so um, I do like to look at is a entrepreneur working on something that she deeply understands and often experience in a sector, in a business sector where uh, she was part of a team or part of a company or maybe an executive and not a founder and then leaves that to go build a company is a really great profile. So contrary to sort of the, the, the opinion or the, 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 you know, the common perception that, you know, startup founders are, you know, the, the, 23 year old out of Stanford with a brilliant idea. Often they are actually much more mature and experienced in their careers. And, and there's just something that they figured out and they said, this is, this is it. I'm going to build a company around this. Mm -hmm. So the TLDR on that is identify a problem that you are uniquely positioned well to be very good at solving. Yep. Based on experience, passion, all of the above, right? I mean, all of right. the exactly. this, yeah. right. It could be a problem that you're solving for yourself um, or a problem that you have experience in or you have depth in. So yeah. identify something that, that no one else better than you can be able to solve for. And, and a great way to check against that is, um, am, I, what, you know, am I following sort of the startup du jour phase? Mm -hmm. You know, at one point it's Uber for this you know, then it's machine learning, then it's, you know, AI. If I'm just building something because it's a buzzword and, and I hear about it and it's sort of the, you know, what, what the blogs are writing about, um, unless I truly am uniquely positioned to build that, that's prob I'm probably just chasing an idea versus something that I'm really in a position to build. And I think on that, it really is less about the idea, right? right? It's not always about the idea. It's about the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, it takes a while to raise funding um, and to capitalize your business. And in those dark days when you don't have that funding, you really need to want to do the work because um, no one's writing you a paycheck. Uh, no one's buying you lunch. Um, no one's patting you on the back for the work. So you have to really love it um, and you have to be good at it. And it has to be enough that will enough of that passion and expertise that can sustain um, until you can really get capitalized and funded. Mm -hmm. so, so point number three uh, w that I would look at, uh, we would look at it would be how big is the market? Um, is it a large and growing market? Um, sometimes people are focused on something that's, that's really interesting, really unique, but it turns out it's also pretty niche um, and, and not that big of a market. Um, I'll do things like ask the entrepreneur to take me to a conference and try to learn the industry because there's so many different industries. So it's not just a, 
PowerPoint slide that says this is a trillion dollar market, but actually really digging in and understanding what the dynamics are in the market. Is the market sort of old school and it's being disrupted by technology, um, which is something that we see frequently around the country. A lot of, you know, deep technical innovation is coming out of Silicon Valley, but there's a lot of industries, you know, maritime industry or an energy industry or, you know, market research industry that are actually based in other parts of the country. And those industries are sort of going through the software eats the industry phase. Yeah, which is really cool. And I think that also goes back to step one, which is it's okay if you're in a niche market, it just might change the way that you want to capitalize your business. You may not need full venture funding. You might just need a seed round to get you started and local investors might be enough. Um, The idea of the matter is, is that, you know, being honest uh, about what that market size looks like and your appetite to attack it. Um, A lot of times we, we see founders who will say, you know, Oh, I want to do all these things. And I, the scratch head moment is, do you really have the appetite to really go for it um, and to really eat up that category? And so it, this is a good moment for you to actually, as much as I think the total addressable market slides are a little bit of BS, mm-hmm. it's also a really good moment for you to have like that look in the mirror and say, how much of that pie do you really have the appetite to bite off? Um, and I think that's a, that's a good centering point as you think about your market. And if it's a really big pie and you want to go for it, you want to kill it. That's a a great checkpoint, um, to communicate effectively to your investors. Yep. All right. right, So you've sized the market. So, yeah. So, so two more steps and I'll try to move through these quickly. So step four. Well, I'm moving through them quickly. (laughs) Step four would be a little bit of the, the, the founder and founding team, um, you know, as I mentioned at the beginning, sort of an experienced founder in a sector, but now you really dig in and, you know, understand sort of the, the DNA and, you know, drive, you know, have I, have, has the founder put everything on the line? You know, sometimes people are, you know, Hey, I, I would quit my job if you'll fund me. Well, that means you actually haven't invested yourself in the business yet um often looking at founding team dynamics there might be sort of a somewhat of a team around it but when you really dig in you know people aren't as committed as you as you as as they need to be and you know that that like in a marriage is just so crucial you've got to have a team that can work together is in it for the long haul you know you're going to be 10-year partners and it's easier to get divorced than it is to, to, to break up a business partnership. So that, that team and the DNA of the team is, is super important. That's true. <laughs> we only have nuclear options. Yeah. Um, so I think the, the thing on that part that's actually really important is, and that you're getting at is um, when you look at the totality of the founder, you're looking to see, is this person you know, all in? Are they going to be coachable? Are they uh, someone that you can believe in that you can write a check to? Um, it's also really important. I think what I've seen from found, some early stage founders is sometimes they don't realize uh, what it's like to have a check written. Um, and I think the best founders are the ones who have actually had to lose the money and have to go to their investors and explain that they lost it. Um, that's a it's a really that's a really Im- important moment um, because especially when there's plenty of capital that's sloshing around and you can pick up dollars here and there you want somebody who knows that um, it's just not free money right you want someone who's actually there and so I think that's one of the things we look for in founders is and that's the that's the test which says have you quit your job are you all in on this have you started to generate revenue are you waiting uh, for permission to do that? Or are you actually just going on and getting at it? And in our world right now, we're working with a lot of foundations in some cases. Um, and, and they move at a very different pace than in venture. And one of the things that we realized is that in our DNA, like we don't wait. We just get to the point of doing business. So um, one put in front of the other and we just keep going and we keep putting points on the board. Um, and we just are hoping that by the time they finish all of their work, we're all kind of landing at the same point. Yeah. And they're like, wait a second, yeah. we thought you'd be 10 steps behind. But if you're waiting, 
you're never going to actually win. And so I think our view is like seeing that drive in the founder is really critical. So you want to be able to demonstrate that. Um, and at the same time, demonstrate coachability, right? And so it's a fine balance between um, how coachable am I, i.e. I'll take all the advice in the world um, versus how capable am I? And you want to you wanna sort of be always balancing those two Mm -hmm. sides of your personality because the person who thinks they have all the answers isn't going to be a very interesting person to invest in because the investor needs to see that their role is more than just money uh and the person who doesn't know anything and is waiting for permission isn't a good thing so you have to you have to find that tight balance that makes you really in line with your investors and what who they want to the type of person they want to invest mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. And step five. Step five is 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 traction and growth, and just you know where where is the business, and can you see clear steps forward? And and part of this is um, the the um, sort of mantra that investors invest in lines, not dots. Um, sort of a misconception that you're going to meet an investor for the first time, and they're going to write you a check right on the spot. Usually, you'll get to know them. It'll be a dialogue, might last months, might last six months. Um, and if every meeting is better than the last, if, if every meeting that entrepreneur has accomplished, you're, you're, you're sort of surprised at how much she got done and how fast it's moving. And, and there, there sort of you know, gets to be this inevitability about it. It's sort of like, okay, this thing's going to happen with or without me, right? And I think that's the way we, we think about our business. Um, then you really get excited about it and, and, and want to get on board, right? Yeah. You know, something, um, you know, so that, that growth and traction and, and demonstrating movement um, is, is key as well. I think that single line, investors invest in lines, not dots, is something that you've always said. And I think it's the single most important thing for me that I've learned and the single most important thing for anyone thinking about investing, which is every single time you got to put points on the board. Um, and if, those, if th that line keeps going up in the right direction, then you'll likely be able to achieve getting funded. Um, and it's okay, you'll also hear no along the way. You can't let that discourage you, right? You've gotta have lots of people that you're talking to. You gotta be putting points on the board. You gotta be showing progress, demonstrating conviction. And if that line keeps going up, then the good news is your business is doing better even if you haven't yet raised your financing. And so I think if you thought, take away one thing, it's Chris's people invest in lines, not... <laughs>